Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this special webinar on social value in public procurement, a Wales perspective. So some housekeeping rules before we start the session, we will pick questions at the end of this session. So please drop in your questions in the Q&A box provided on your screen and ask us as many questions as you want, wherever you are in your social value journey, whatever challenges, barriers you are facing, please ask us those questions and we will take it at the end of the session. We will be using Mentimeter for today's session, so please join the Mentimeter exercise, share your insights and experience with us. We will upload the recording after the session, so just sit back, relax and explore more about social value. A uh, brief introduction about today's speakers. My name is Vishali Bed. I'm a senior consultant with Action Sustainability, and I'm a procurement professional, and I've worked in various categories in Fortune 100 companies, with my focus areas being social value, social sustainability, and integrating sustainability within the procurement processes. And today, we have a special guest, Paul Griffiths from Welsh Government. He's head of commercial uh, delivery and capability. Paul has overseen a program of national collaborative contracts since Jan 2016. He oversees the delivery of a collaborative proc uh, procurement pipeline for Wales with over 30 national frameworks. He also leads the Welsh Government's commercial capability team. And prior to that, Paul has held a variety of procurement roles across the Welsh public sector, including he head of professional services in the National Procurement Service and the strategic procurement advisor to the Welsh government's economy department. I'm sure Paul has a lot to share with us in today's session, and we will hear from Paul in a while. So let's get started with our session today. So let's address the first question, which is a million pound question. What is social value for us? So a little bit of scene setting over here. In the last few years, we all have witnessed COVID. We have all seen the impacts, the negative impacts of climate change and needless to say, the changing geopolitical situations. So it is time that as public procurement, as businesses, we take a stand and do something using procurement, which I think is a force for good for businesses. So of course, to remember, uh, these age old challenges around bringing you know more opportunities to our local communities giving more opportunities to our local supply chain addressing modern slavery issues and so on so social value is the right tool for us to actually address all these scenarios in different ways so now what we will do, we need to hear your insights. We need to hear your experience. So we will be using Menti and uh, I will request you to please log in to menti.com and you will be probed to enter a code over there and code is uh, 12425826. You can see the code on your screen, which is 12425826. And once we are there, we will share some questions with you. Till that time, I will try and share my Mentimeter. I hope you are able to see my screen with the Mentimeter question. So, I already see certain responses over there. So my first question for you is, what is social value for you and your organization? How do you address social value? How do you define social value? What is social value for you? We will give it almost like a minute over here so that we can get the responses. But what I can see on my screen right now is we are talking about the community. We are talking, uh, talking about giving back to our, uh, to our society, challenging community contribution, local SME spend, employment opportunities, 
quality. We are not just talking about quantity, but quality over here. Responsibility, charity, care, equality, making wise choices. Brilliant. Let's see if we have more participants with their contribution over here. Uh, just again, the uh, whatever you are putting, on the Mentimeter, it's anonymous. So the code is on your screen, which is 12425826. Social ac uh, action, extra mile, helping our communities, legacy in the community, talking about sustainability, social action, how we are going through that extra mile, what we are adding extra to our society. I think. Uh, one thing is quite clear with these results, we are talking about positive impact, how we can make positive impact to our local communities and bring those wider benefits to our local communities. And I think we will be discussing more about what is social value in its real sense, but it's good to get your feedback, your insights over here. Moving on to the next question, I want you to think about what are the terms you are using within your organization to define positive impact. You can define positive impact through social value. You can name it social impact, sustainability, ESG, which is more like an investor's uh, you know, word that is being used, UN SDG goals, CSR, which is more like a traditional practice, are we talking about community benefits, sustainable procurement, sustainable supply chain, triple bottom line, or something else that what we have not covered today? So just think about how you are defining that positive impact. because we have seen different sectors defining that social impact, that positive impact differently through different phrases and terminologies. So we just want to understand how you are defining that positive impact. So what I can see on my screen is, of course, social value, social impact. Whatever we are doing to generate that positive impact, we are defining it through the terms like social value, social impact. Second is sustainability. I think what we are trying to cover here around sustainability is the three pillars around the economic side, the social side, and the environmental side. Community benefits, again, what we are doing for the local communities wherever we are existing. Of course, we have taken a broader approach. We are using sustainable procurement. Again, how we can use procurement as a force for good, for you know, driving our organizational positive impact. And still some companies, some organizations still are using CSR. I think there is no harm, but we need to define what is the difference between social value and CSR. Because uh, if you remember when we used to talk about CSR earlier, it used to be more about what you are giving back to society in terms of say, you know, certain donation, what are the volunteering hours you are putting for those kind of charity works. So it used to talk about your input mechanism, but within social value, we are going beyond. We are talking about impact. We are talking about outputs. And ESG, of course, we will talk about ESG little bit, but it's more from the investor scenario. Brilliant. Uh, my next question is, do you think social value is part of your procurement strategy or is it something different? We are talking about two different things or is it just same that we are talking about social value, which should be part of your procurement strategy? I think it's quite evident from the responses over here that social value is part of your procurement strategy. You can't work around social value, social areas and impact creation if you are not working on your procurement strategy. So we are talking about social value, 
but integrating within our procurement processes and strategies. My next question is, let's talk about the whales. Uh, I know there is uh, no particular social value whales model, but what do you think? Uh, if when we talk about social value in whales, are we talking about the Social Value Act 2012, which is for the UK? Are we talking more from the Wellbeing of Future Generation Act's perspective? Or are we talking about sustainable procurement here? I don't think there is any right answer or wrong answer over here. But what do you think is the focus uh, around the Social Value Wales? Brilliant. It good. It's good to know, actually, that we are thinking from all the spaces that, of course, we are taking elements of Social Value Act within the Wales model, but it is mostly focused as of now around well-being of Future Generation Act, and it also includes certain elements of sustainable procurement, specifically from, you know, the British standard. But I'm sure Paul will touch and discuss on this in detail. So we will we will just leave it as it is and Paul will give us more insights over here. My next question is, uh, when we are talking about social value whales, which are the key areas that we are talking? Are we talking only about the social aspects? Are we talking about the economic, environmental or cultural aspects? Or you think we are talking about all the four aspects when we are talking about social value whales? brilliant what we see is of course social value whales model includes the social elements economic environmental and cultural elements and that's the beauty of the whale social value model over here and again i will leave it to paul to discuss in detail once he shares his perspective and work with us moving back to the legal side of social value what do you think? Is there a legal definition for social value? Specifically, think about the Social Value Act 2012 and PPN 0620. Yes, no. I think the bars look almost similar. But the correct answer is there is no legal definition around social value. And we will just give you a different perspective over here once we move back to our presentation. But as such, there is no legal definition of social value within PPNO 620 or within Social Value Act 2012. My next question is, let's think about PBN 0620. How many social value themes are there within this uh, PBN 0620? Four, five, eight. So, of course, the correct answer is there are five social value themes within PPNO 620 and eight policy outcomes that are related to these five social value themes. My next question and probably the last question, uh, can you rank what are the three reasons why your organization, why your procurement is interested in social value? What are your drivers to work around social value? Is it just the public requirements? Is it more, uh, if you are, of course, say from private sector, your investors have started asking around what you're doing around the environmental and the social side of the business to attract and retain staff, to manage reputation, the brand image, or to improve relationship with your local communities, uh, risk management to drive innovation or something else that we have not covered. Or is it the purpose of your business? Is it the purpose of your procurement that we want to give back to our society? We want to bring that value to our procurement processes.
Brilliant. So the first reason what I can see on my screen is to improve relationship with communities, with local communities, with which with whom we are working to understand our client requirements and how we can give them better through social value impact. And of course, the public requirement, because it's mandatory now to consider social value within our tenders, within our frameworks. So brilliant. Thank you for this. And the fourth reason is around legacy, that how we can create legacy through our procurement and through our organization. So let's move uh, back to our presentation. And I will just take a minute over here. Brilliant. So uh, what we saw on Menti, of course, different organizations are defining social value quite differently. Be it, you know, CSR, you can name it sustainability, ESG, TOMS at times, social impact and whatnot. But I'm sure some of you, if not all, might be bamboozled by these many phrases that are existing in the market right now to refer social value. But just think about your supply chain, think about your contractors, because if you as a client, you are asking something around social value and there is some other client who is asking around say social impact or ESG, the suppliers are actually inundated with these terms and jargons, which is all related to positive impact. So let's quickly demystify what is social value for us. As we have seen during the mentee exercise that there is no legal definition for social value. And trust me, that is the beauty of this concept, because you can define your own social value based on your region, based on, you know, based on many factors, like what are the impact areas for your organization, where you can bring value for your local communities. And if you will look the Public Services Social Value Act 2012, it mentions that let's consider economic, social, and environmental well-being when we are looking at social value. What it is targeting is let's bring that wider benefits for our local communities. Let's think in a broader sense how we can create, you know, better opportunities, how we can bring more green spaces, how we can, you know, uh, work around the climate change issues when we are working with our local communities. So think broadly, think about the wider benefits that we can bring for our local communities. Social Value UK, they define around the quantification, which is, you know, around the measurement part. And I think measuring social value, it's one of the toughest questions, or rather than toughest, it's one of the trickiest questions. Because we need to understand one thing, when we are talking about the measurement part about, around social value or social impact, what we are talking is how I can translate the qualitative impact that I'm making on the society, on the people, and translating it into quantifiable numbers. So it's a task because what we are doing is we are translating those qualitative things into quantifiable numbers. And remember one thing, when we are talking about that positive impact, social value, we are talking about people, how I'm feeling today, how I will feel tomorrow, am I satisfied with my jobs, and things around that. So we are talking about those, you know, softer elements of people's life. So it's, of course, a trickier question over here is around the measurement piece. But there are a lot of developments in last two years, three years around how we can measure social value. Uh, just one tip over here, specifically if you are a supplier or a subcontractor contractor, when you're looking at social value specifically for a tender or for a framework, think about what is social value for you, what it means to you then ask your client what they want to achieve from the social value, from their social value objectives. And when you know these two pieces, think about is, is it something you want to contribute for that local community where you plan to deliver social value? And here, you know, here is the biggest gap. You might know what a social value for you, for your client, but 
is it something your local community is really looking for is it something a kind of a challenging situation for your local community maybe yes maybe no so it is imperative you need to do a kind of a local need analysis that what are the needs of my local community and can i address these needs through my social value policy or through the work that i am delivering through the tender or the framework so try to understand and define your own social value value uh what we have done uh, last year is through our school platform we run a lot of surveys and we asked our partners and 10000 members that you know why you need to work around social value what are your drivers and the three pillars that you see on your screen these are the three biggest Uh, drivers for working around social value improving well being again think in a wider aspect that you are bringing well being for your local communities but how you can work around social value to bring those wider well being opportunities for your own staff for your own employees and then how you can minimize those negative impacts because i think it is important to understand uh, we as businesses we as organizations we do create certain negative impacts in society just for example if i'm from rail industry we there are certain noise pollution issues can i use my social value strategy or objectives to mitigate those negative impacts and bring positive impacts to my society that's the way we need to design our social value framework or policies business benefits uh again some of the sectors uh, like construction healthcare we are going through a kind of a crunch within our workforce uh and what is imperative is how we can retain how we can engage our workforce within our businesses within our organization and again think about how you can use social value for that because i always give this example that you know uh, earlier how it used to happen if i'm a recruiter i will check the candidates profile i will look at their professional experience what they have done which categories they have managed but now the tables have turned as a candidate i do some kind of a background check the organization the company uh, with whom i'm interviewing what is the social image of that company what they are giving back to the society are they purpose driven company or not so think about how you can use social value as a tool to bring that workforce satisfaction and engagement within your organization and lastly of course if you are a supplier contractor think about how you can help your clients how you can use a positive influence on your clients helping them meeting the mandates around social value and of course win more work for future and you know deliver those social value initiatives um now here is an overview of some of the existing legislative frameworks that include social value starting with ppno 620 which is procurement policy note for the uk ppn 0121 which is for northern ireland and it is mandatory from this year uh, i think from 1st june 2022 that tenders within northern ireland must allocate a minimum of 10% of the total award criteria to social value the only difference uh, between ppn 0121 and 0620 is for northern ireland there are only four social value themes compared to ppn 0620 where we have five social value themes uh if i remember correctly covid 19 recovery is not included within the northern ireland ppn but that's just because they have included all the policy outcomes from covid 19 recovery to other social value themes within the ppn and the last one is of course well being of future generations act 2015 which is based on you know different elements of social value act sustainable procurement principles and of course the well being of future generation act and of course i will leave it to paul to discuss this in detail when we he will be discussing about from the wales perspective 
Uh, this is about the PPNO 620. I will not go in detail, just to give you an overview. We are talking about five social value themes. And just a thought over here that these are new, not you know, new or recent developments. I think tackling economic inequality, we are trying to, you know, work around these issues within our organizations and, you know, public sector from a long, long time. It's not a new phenomena. Equal opportunity, again, how we can reduce the disability employment gap, how we can give more opportunities to say disadvantage or marginalized group, how we can actually tackle the modern slavery issues. These are not new issues, but what social value PPNO 620 and other social value models are doing really, you know, beautifully is they are giving a home to all these social challenges. Our societies are changing, our problems are changing. What, what it is doing is it's just giving home to all the societal challenges that we are facing, you know, through different things, be it COVID, be it the economic inequality and so on. So think about whenever you are working on your social value strategy for tenders or for your procurement, think about which are the areas where you can bring impact and then work around it. Uh, just some last few thoughts over here, because I think um, it's a common question. Should I work around social value? Maybe it's just in one or a few tenders and frameworks. I will say you need to work around social value because it's here to stay. It will not fade away in next two years or three years. And what we see specifically from the UK context or uh, from Wales context that it is getting stronger, it is getting bolder. We really need to include social value within our procurement processes. And um, I think it's easy to say it will be your license to operate in future. So if you're working around social value, specifically within your procurement, it will give you that edge. It will give you that leverage to work with different clients. And of course, uh, if you are from private sector by any chance on this uh, webinar, you need to think about your investors' confidence because ESG is getting stronger different investors, banks, they are asking about your ESG reporting. And don't forget within that ESG, S plays an important role, which is around social, that what you're doing for your own employees, what you are doing for your local communities. So uh, with this, it's time to hear from Paul. And uh, without further ado, let's virtually welcome Paul on our webinar. Thank you so much, Paul. I will just hand it over to you and I will stop sharing my screen. Lovely, thanks for Shelley. Uh, that's much appreciated. So it's a really good sort of um, holistic overview across the United Kingdom in terms of social value. Before, um, before I go into my first presentation, because you'll all be delighted to know you're gonna be hearing from me twice today, which uh, could be a terrible cross to bear on a Friday. But uh, my first presentation is going to be basically to update everybody in terms of where we are in, in relation to the social value journey within Wales. So that's gonna be fairly short and sharp, probably around 10 minutes. Uh, after a pause for any questions then, I'm gonna go into a far more practically focused presentation, which um, I like to call just basically social value. We're really putting policy into practice. So there's a keen focus around the work that we've been doing with um, uh, across um, social firms um, within Wales and um, I'm going to provide some really good examples and some practical hints and tips of how we can really put social value into practice, either directly through yourselves or by using some of the other collaborative agreements that uh, Vishali touched upon earlier when she introduced me. Uh, I've been working in the sort of wider social value community benefits, whatever you want to call it, space. And of course, we had lots of good definitions earlier uh, through, through the tool there, probably since the 90s, when I think the big focus was around the environment. So sustainable procurement was all environmentally focused then, and there was a lot of work done, and who can forget such wonderful papers that describing in two years' time, we'll have the paperless office. So we're still waiting for that about 25 years later, but we've certainly moved in the right direction. Direction, um, particularly the way that we've been using um, 
using different things. You, you'll see a little bit later on a great example around recycled paper, how we're using that to um, drive social value. So um, then the focus sort of moved on to the economic and then very quickly marched forward onto the wider social. And then uh, we were involved in a lot of work around the community benefits tool, which if you like was probably across the UK, the first approach to capturing um, social value and introducing it into the procurement landscape. So that work continued. We then had the well-being of future generations, which introduced the fourth element to us, namely the cultural side. And so um, here we are today. Uh, it's in 2022. We've been on a fairly long journey and um, social value, though these many different uh, clauses, etc. Uh, we're in a position now in Wales where we're just looking to bring all of this together and move forward in a, in a very uniform um, manner. But I should say before I go into my presentation, um, great thanks to, um, I'm sure they're on this call, a number of organisations have really been at the forefront of driving forward social value over the uh, past number of years, and particularly colleagues in the WLGA, the Welsh Local Government Association, who have done some great work with the wellbeing of future generations, a number of local authority colleagues uh, in terms of mapping uh, a tool set to the wellbeing of future generations. So we're building on some fantastically solid foundations and so now I'm just going to take you through the next six months in terms of where we're going to be heading. There will be a slight pause as I try and work out how to share my screen. I was saying to Vishali and Billy earlier, I'm more of a Microsoft Teams person than a Zoom. So, so you, we might not get the full presentation in all of its glory on the screen, but uh, hopefully we're not going to see my shopping list for a bit later on in Morrison's today. I'm going to try and go to full screen, but I understand it probably isn't going to make too much of a difference to your view, but hopefully you can see the slides there. Yes. So, and I was introduced earlier, so we're going to go straight into the detail. I'm going to be providing an update on social value where we are. So um, back in December 2021, we commissioned Compass, uh, formerly known as the Wales Cooperative, to uh, undertake for con consultation engagement with the Welsh public sector, basically to um, map um, the application of the social value landscape across Wales. Um, I think probably one of the first things that came up, because we, we heard from Shelley earlier talking about the Social Value Act, etc. And um, that has been a great piece of legislation, but that applies to England. And in Wales, we are all about the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, absolutely groundbreaking legislation, which uh, was developed uh, onwards from 2012, coming into being in 2016. So I think... Um, you know, one, one of the key things that uh, we all recognised is that while we were, we were operating through the social value lens, uh, we had to consider actually moving sh or shifting that to the sort of uh, viewpoint of the well-being of future generations. But of course, with the need to align to everything that's going on around procurement reform, social partnerships and public procurement bills. So there's an awful lot going on in the procurement world currently, not to mention just all of the current pressures that we're all trying to deal with, uh, just in the sort of the normal round of work, you know, particularly inflationary pressures, etc. So um, Compass produced the report and you can, I know that you'll get the slides after the presentation. So there is a link to the full report, which I'm not going to go through uh, in detail, but what I'm going to focus on are the seven key recommendations that came out from the report. So um, recommendation number one, uh, Welsh Government needs to be seen to take the lead for um, the development of a Wales-wide approach to social value. So that was a key recommendation. I think it was recognised. As I said, there was that great practice going on um, from other sectors, but I think just to get that holistic um, approach together, it was recognised that the Welsh Government should take the lead for this particular activity. And that's something that you'll also see in a well-being of the Future Generations uh, commissioned report into procurement across the Welsh public sector, which is basically advocating something very, very similar in terms of our wider role there. Um, we need a clearer uh, definition of um, social value and that was back to the point that Shelley made earlier that there is no one definition as it were there are lots of different ways that it's defined and indeed there is a Wales procurement policy note a WPPN 0120 don't worry about making a note of that I'll give you the links to everything at the end of my second presentation and that talks about the application of social value community benefits clauses within Wales uh, and again so that's a good foundation in terms of us within Wales there but yes we need to really come up with a clear de definition and it was also felt that 
the term social value, of course, applies to English legislation. And we should be using terms that apply to the well-being of future generations. So um, work is ongoing in terms of determining the, uh, the terminology, but we're probably looking at something along the lines of well-being impacts uh, rather than use the term social value. And that well-being impacts will bring everything together. So all of the community benefits, whatever it might be, it will all come under the well-being impacts banner. So um, consistent methodology is required because we've got a number of similar but not consistent methodologies that we're using across um, the Welsh public sector. Uh, and again, in that same vein, format and guidance for reporting needs to be consistent and, of course, link up with the Social Partnerships and Public Procurement Wales Bill uh, and ongoing reform work as reflected earlier. And of course, we had a very, very clear request uh, from um, a hard pressed procurement community across Wales. We need support, um, our buyers really need support and importantly, the supply side needs support in this because um, it was touched upon earlier, uh, the application of social value is something now that could ultimately determine the, um, the direction of travel or the award of a particular contract. So it's really important on the buy side and ultimately, sorry, the supply side and ultimately it's going to be our suppliers who are going to be delivering um, the bulk of um, our key sort of uh, outcomes, well-being impacts as we move forward. So um, that was the, the recommendations. So a working group's been established because the progress to delivery recommendations two to five. Um, Welsh Government supporting that group and um, we've only recently had the first annex in fact the second meetings of the group have been held since the slides were put together and so um, the discussion around the social value name and definition um, that is close to agreement once that's been formally agreed that will be um, published more widely to the Welsh public sector and the time scales then um, we need to get these recommendations delivered by April 2023. So we've got about four or five months left to do. So there's a big focus on this particular work. Uh, this then will need to inform the statutory guidance that's being developed to support the upcoming bills that were referenced earlier. So it's pointless, this work being undertaken in isolation of that particular activity. So um, on the Welsh government side, we are very, very closely linked across all of that legislative slide. In fact, we are responsible for the procurement reform activity within Wales, and we've got a very close working relationship with the colleagues taking forward the social partnerships um, legislation. And, Apologies, uh, Paul. Sorry, your slides are not moving. So right, which I slide don't are we want on to now. <laughs> so, uh, Still on the first slide. All oh, right. Okay, yeah. that's unfortunate because according to me, I'm on slide five. So um, let's. Um, Just pause for a minute and I hope that something happens soonish. It was all working so well earlier. Yes. So, um, I'll just take off slideshow and I think, can we see the progress to date? Yes. Yeah, I'll, we, yep. we'll, we'll ignore the slideshow, so apologies for that. That's you haven't missed fine. too much, and <laughs> so I've covered it all off. You get the slides afterwards. And that was it really on the social value side. So. Big work to um, to bring all of this together in a consistent manner, building on the, uh, the great work that's um, happened before over many, many years and, and most recently as well. And uh, an open offer really to anybody on this call. If you would like any further info or be kept informed of developments, if you drop a note to our commercial policy team at that particular address, and they'll ensure that you're added to the appropriate stakeholder uh, engagement um, listings. So. I think I'll take this off sharing altogether now, just to see if we have any uh, any questions that people would like to raise before we move on to the the next element of the presentation. And apologies for the lack of the slides appearing there, but uh, hopefully it was fairly clear. Uh, Paul, maybe no questions as of now, but we have 15 minutes later for the Q&A. Yeah, so there might be a few more questions which come up after the next um, part of the presentation. Absolutely. So um, I will go back to the, uh, the, uh, the the hoped for sharing of the slides. We'll run a bit, bit of a test on this now before, to make sure they're moving. So um, you can't trust the technology. So, yeah, well, it's probably me. So uh, so hopefully now we can see the 
the intro slide for yes. um, yeah. growing opportunities for Welsh social enterprises. So uh, while it sounds like quite a specific title, um, working with our Welsh social enterprises is just such a powerful way to really deliver that wider social value or those, those, those well-being impacts. Um, and, and I'm going to run through basically uh, why social enterprise is so important to Wales. And you'll understand from that why it's so important then uh, that we work with them and how they can really support our policy drivers. I'll run through a number of um, lessons learned that we've captured in a brief history of our work with social enterprises. And then I will quickly run through a number of um, case studies or not run through them, but just um, bring them to your uh, uh, to everybody's attention. And then um, we'll finish with some practical hints and tips and there will be links to appropriate guidance, etc, help support, uh, whatever it might be. So um, before we start, though, a little bit of terminology, what is a social enterprise and effectively it's a business with primarily social objectives, whose surpluses, because there's nothing to stop them making a profit. In fact, it's quite important that they do, but those surpluses or profits are principally reinvested in the business or specifically within the community. And so they're not being there driven by the need to maximize profit for shareholders and owners. So they, um, businesses then that are really rooted in the community and when they make profit, whatever it might be, that then gets reinvested back into the community. So it fits so well with that wider sort of um, the, the social value discussions that were heard there earlier around community, giving back, etc. Uh, with their social objectives, you know, they undoubtedly support a whole range of folk from across the spectrum of society. So um, they are really, really important um, businesses from that perspective. And they're a wonderful outlook at them as social value engines. They are absolutely brilliant in that regard. Now, within the wider definition of that social enterprise, we have something called a supported business or a sheltered workshop. And you'll hear those titles used interchangeably. They are effectively a social enterprise where at least 30% of the employees are dis disabled or disadvantaged workers. So they're giving real opportunity to people who probably would have been left outside of what I would call um, opportunities in, in the working space. They really help people grow confidence, uh, return to the workforce to take their first steps in terms of work. And um, they're not there really just to keep people in the same role forever and a day, but to help people grow and then take on opportunities in a whole range of other settings. And finally, I'm sure we've got lots of procurement folk on the call today, but uh, for those who aren't present, you might hear me reference DPS on a few occasions, that's dynamic purchasing system, but I am not going to be delving into massive amounts of procurement legislation today, so nobody need panic if you're not from the Welsh public sector. This is going to be a really good sort of practical um, next 10 to 15 minutes that I'll take everybody through. So we'll just adjust the slides. And um, before we go into the detail, just a, a quick recognition of the wider Welsh procurement landscape. So the Welsh public sector itself spends some eight billion pounds per annum through its procurement. Uh, and that is a really powerful tool uh, to drive that wider social value with those wellbeing impacts, et cetera. Um, we do struggle as a profession in terms of the numbers that we've got to support this procurement. So we're always, um, uh, aware of the pressures across us all in the procurement community because it's an ever-growing um, set of requirements that we have to deliver uh, with um, what at times feels like ever decreasing resource so those two clearly don't um, help square the circle as it were so um, you know these are the pressures that we're operating under and hopefully what I'll be able to just uh, provide with you today is some quite fairly straightforward practical ways you can really be supporting the wider social value piece because um, through collaboration etc you know others have done the work on your behalf which is I think one of the true powers behind that particular model talked about the well-being of future generations 2015 there so very much uh, frames everything that we do within the procurement space but we have a Welsh procurement or Wales procurement policy statement 10 key principles as to how we should approach um, how we should approach uh, our procurement uh, to truly deliver the well-being of future generations. And within that, we talk about the application of social value, both in terms of uh, delivering through our agreements and also in terms of uh, including that as part of a wider 
um, assessment of particular tenders. And so there are lots of different things going on in the Welsh procurement landscape um, today. But of course, uh, for those who are unaware of the Wales procurement policy statement, that is the sort of fundamental um, sort of agent of change to which um, key principles that we operate to within the procurement community. So in terms of, that of social enterprises, the Welsh Government or so colleagues in social firms Wales, we have a vision that social enterprises sit at the heart of a fair and more sustainable and more prosperous Wales. And just for those from the procurement community, that um, if you engage with social enterprises through procurement, you're fully embracing the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. You'll be able to evidence that, uh, and I'll be able to um, reference how you actually do that a little bit later on. And um, you're delivering against Wales Procurement Policy Statement Principles 1, 5 and 10, which I won't, um, I won't read out today, but they're there for you to digest. So what you can see is engaging with social enterprises, just really, really important uh, and um, has a significant impact in terms of delivering against both um, the legislative requirements and also our policy requirements as well. Aside from the fact it's just a really good thing to do for communities, back to what everybody said at the start of the presentation, and just really helping the people of Wales. So um, a lot of people like to ask the question, well, Paul, that's great, but um, social enterprises, are they really that important to Wales? Um, answer is yes, quite clearly, we're a nation of social enterprises. You, you know, we've got over 2,000 in operation. They employ 55,000 people across Wales and they make a 3 billion contribution to the Welsh economy. So we can't ignore them. They are vital to Wales. And so it's really, really important that we engage with them. Um, they manufacture, remanufacture, in fact, remanufacturing really important to wider social value and sustainability piece um, is just at the forefront of a lot of the work that social enterprises do. So they have they they produce or remanufacture a vast range of goods and also they deliver a vast range of services. So you'll probably find a social enterprise that can pretty much work on anything in terms of uh, the majority of your procurement requirements. So um, just to go through some of um, the lessons learned, because um, this isn't a recent journey in terms of the, our work with um, the social enterprises. Uh, back in 2010, I was involved in the first UK wide supported business framework. So that was something that we let furniture signage, ICT recycling, and um, effectively it was restricted to supported businesses. And remember what I said about those earlier in the definitions, 30% of the staff, um, have uh, disabilities or are disadvantaged. And so we set that up for signage, ICT, recycling, and we were very, very confident uh, along the lines of Kevin Costner that if you build it, they will come. Um, nobody actually did. And that was a key lesson learned, uh, apart from one um, particular department within the Welsh government, the ICT team, who really put in a tremendous amount of work to make the ICT recycling element of that particular framework a success. So we took away some great lessons learned um, from that particular exercise around supported businesses in particular. They do need the support both pre-tender and during the contract. Uh, you can't just expect them to suddenly respond to a whole range of different opportunities that come at the same time. It really does help if you can identify an incremental growth of opportunities. We'd also call that a pipeline, wouldn't we? And of course, that links back to procurement reform work we talked about earlier and the need for us to start identifying opportunities well in advance of uh, our particular activity. Champions to support them in delivery from the public sector make such a difference. And we've deployed that model since then. But going back all those years ago, it was thanks to um, Welsh Government ICT team and a particular gentleman called David Milner, who um, really put in such tremendous effort with that particular company. And they're still supplying the Welsh Government now under a different name. They're still a supported business. And uh, we'll talk about them a little bit later on. Um, better jobs close to home. Um, people remember this program or hopefully be aware that um, this was originally developed to identify and deliver Welsh manufacturing opportunities. Uh, undertook a number of different um, sort of testbed projects or pilot schemes uh, to um, identify how supply chain intervention uh, through national major, sorry, major national contracts, you know, how we could really unlock that power to deliver those better jobs within Wales and of course by definition then the wider social value 
and it morphed into a sort of way that it 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 really demonstrated that the social enterprise sector was absolutely key to this particular project we've seen the reasons we've seen the scope the scale and their flexibility etc and it just um, it really demonstrated to us a model that could be um, spread and scaled as we like to say or employed across a multitude of activity so um it was a really insightful piece of work that was taken forward um, some of the projects weren't successful some were brilliantly successful but Boy, did we learn a lot of lessons from that. And we've been routinely deploying that model now uh, for a number of years through the collaborative um, programme that Shelley mentioned that I lead on. Um, last year, then, there was some work undertaken, uh, commissioned by the Welsh Government Foundation Economy, uh, around progressive procurement workshops, which were uh, delivered through the Centre for Local Economic Studies. Um, Claire's, who you, a number of you will have heard about doing a range of different work across um, public sector procurement supporting their sort of definition of social value which is around community well-being so um, I was part of a working group that was made up of buyers and social enterprises and if there was it was brilliant you know it was just so great to spend time with this wide range of um, socially focused companies because it just completely and utterly open my eyes to um you know they're, they're always they're already good a good way open but you know really open my eyes to what could be done through social enterprises there were some brilliant projects being run across wales and from me in the procurement perspective i thought wow you know this is an absolute game changer now in terms of how we're going to deliver um the wider social value those well-being impacts moving forward and if there's one key lesson i took from all of the particular workshops it was a, just a clear message from the social enterprise sector let us know what will what you want in advance we might not be doing it now but we'll find a way that we can do that for you and it was um it was really really powerful because they are a super flexible part of the welsh economy and that was something before those sessions i don't think i really appreciated so that was the journey and some of the lessons that we've learned. Um, I will just very quickly highlight some of the examples and some of the impacts that we've seen. So um, we manage a national framework for office supplies through the Welsh Government Commercial Delivery Team. Um, yeah, pens, it's just pens and pencils and a bit of paper. So what on earth could you do that? do with that it's actually turned into i can only describe it as one of the greatest social value engines i've ever had the honor of of working on and great credit must go to um the particular contractor and this is where it's really important in terms of the buy side and the supply side <coughs> the contractor is wholly bought in and focused on working with welsh-based suppliers and um, welsh-based social enterprises i'm just going to pause for a, a water And so really it's been a meeting of minds since we've worked with the, the particular company called um, Lyrico. But they started the journey with something called the Cymru Copier Scheme. And basically what this involved was um, chlorine-free recycled paper, 100% um, um, recycled, uh, going out to the wider public sector. And then for confidential documentation, they work with Elite Solutions, one of our Welsh, um, major Welsh social enterprise there. Uh, to develop a confidential waste service and it grew slowly but surely and um, it's now basically elite have partnered with social enterprises across Wales to deliver the service because it's a national agreement um, the, um, the spread and the scale could be managed incrementally in a very very effective way and uh, those figures are out of date actually it says over 180 people have passed through the service on the path to new employment I think um, I heard the other day when I was speaking to um, to colleagues there, actually 500 people have actually been through the service, either gaining jobs that some of which are now they're, they're still in those particular roles or have been used as a springboard to go elsewhere, either within the elite sort of um, community or out into um, other employment as well. So it's a wonderful example of supply chain integration. And if you were using our particular agreement then um, that is something that you could look to um, implement in your own organization and you have just delivered or contributed to a really great social value well-being impact offering um, just through 
the simple purchase of pens and papers. We're doing so much more now in this particular agreement as well. And now we're looking to bring together Welsh manufacturers who produce a range of instrumentation to manage um, energy, et cetera. Uh, sorry, yeah, energy usage flows within your central heating systems, et cetera. So we're looking for these tools to be manufactured in Wales or the instruments to be manufactured in Wales with support from a social enterprise. They'll be made available through the agreement uh, for organizations to uh, really effectively, and I've seen some of this instrumentation in progress and in, in action, really allows you to find out how your heating systems are working and then you can really find key efficiencies uh, use it maintenance wise to uh, to um, to ensure that your systems are running as efficiently as possible. And um, some of these tools have been used across big organizations in England and saved an absolute fortune on heating uh, in particular and particularly relevant now with everything that's going on in the energy market. So that has been, you know, is a great example. And who would have thought basically office supplies could contribute so much to Wales. It just shows the scope of the opportunity. Um, we've got a national framework for furniture as well. And um, that was developed over a long period of pre-market engagement, um, which is um, an approach that you'll see good solid procurement category uh, management to pre-market engagement. Effectively, what we did was identify that there were um, there were wealth of well social enterprises, many involved in small scale upcycling. So as part of the wider tender, which we moved away just from purchase, um, we made the focus equally on both purchase and remanufacture. Uh, we tested supplies in terms of how they were going to work with Welsh social enterprises, you know, those smaller companies um, who might be able to take on them, the upcycling of, I don't know, a range of desks and whatever it might be. So we tested that in terms of the core lotting, but we also reserved a lot for supported businesses so uh, or sheltered workshops. And on that lot, we have the Ministry of Furniture, Merthyr Tidville Institute for the Blind, formed a Welsh um, basically um, Welsh supported business consortia. And through this particular agreement, they have won circa three million pounds worth of business. That's that's more now since this slide was actually produced. Uh, they've used it as a springboard into a whole range of other settings as well. So they are part of supply chain activity through the SUSCAP frameworks that uh, are run by um, Cardiff Council. And so it's um, they're growing employment. They're helping more and more disadvantaged folk back into the workplace. And um, it again, it's been another great success story. And again, a, a great simple example. So we've got direct contract opportunities, supply chain integration there. But again, if you were looking at your particular organization and thought, right, we want to rekit the office, um, we want to do something that really hits the well-being of future generations. We want to drive down carbon. Uh, we want to support the circular economy. Uh, we really want a big social dividend. There would be nothing to stop with you, stop you just discussing with the Ministry of Furniture your particular requirements. Uh, alternatively, you could run some form of competition through the uh, through the other lot again, which is embedded lots of small niche social well social enterprises there. But nothing to stop you there. Just really exploring with them the art of the possible. And there are some wonderful examples. Most recent one is the new. Welsh Local Government Association offices in Cardiff, which were designed by the Ministry of Furniture, a whole range of remanufactured products gone in. So they save money against buying new and they just supported Wales in such a great way and brought that big social value dividend to the fore there. So that was another example. Uh, sorry, we're rattling through them fairly quickly now, but they're just so exciting that uh, I did want to highlight them all today. So personal protective equipment. So we're not just talking now um, the PP that we're all familiar with, unfortunately, through the pandemic, but we're talking about workwear now, uniforms, et cetera. So we put in place a dynamic purchasing system. Those are those magic letters, DPS. And um, that was really designed to give opportunities to Welsh manufacturers and social enterprises, because there is quite a buoyant sector when it comes to personal protective equipment. Um, around Welsh manufacturing social enterprises and surprisingly uh, that being found from our our market engagement. Um, 
We also use it as a sort of uh, approach. So for those other distributors on there, uh, UK based, we really used it to drive forward the message that we want you to source from the Welsh manufacturers. So you almost get like a multi-channel approach then. Uh, and we've also have a reserved for supported businesses um, dynamic purchasing system that sits alongside this. Uh, and that is um, accessible across the whole of the country. So if there's anyone joining us from England, Scotland or Northern Ireland, and you really want to drive forward your social value dividend and you've got work up, coming up on potential uniforms, whatever it might be, um, please contact me and we'll put you in touch with the providers on that uh, reserve supported businesses dynamic purchasing system. Basically, um, from the Welsh perspective, there's a supply chain there led again by Elite, but they're working with companies such as Broadwith, uh, Triorki, Sewing, uh, and a whole range of other companies all involved in textiles and manufacturer. So they can scale up for um, bigger demands. And um, I think that's probably something we should share. People always thought, well, I don't want to give the bigger contracts to these uh, these um, uh, social enterprises because I'm not sure they'll be up to it. Trust me, they're up to it if you give them the time to prepare and plan. And this is a great example on the PPE, the personal protective, the, the workwear, um, where if they've got the time, they can spread, they can scale up manufacturing and they are very, very cost effective as well. Because, of course, you know, cost is an important factor, but, um, you know, that's we've got, we've got a great approach there. And as I say, it's accessible across the UK public sector. And while we say we're looking to develop a Welsh textile supply chain, I've just described that it's already in place. So that was another one. Um, I touched on eCycle earlier, so I won't go into too much detail other than to say we have a company called eCycle. They're based in Ron the Cut and Taff. They're now a major player in the ICT disposal uh, industry. They are another supportive business um, providing real opportunities for um, for um, for Welsh workers there, particularly those who are disadvantaged or with disabilities. Um, Welsh government's been working with them. It goes back to that those earlier slides for a good number of years and they're now picking up a business uh, across the public sector. But again, another really simple way that you can deliver against the well-being of future generations by engaging with eCycle. And um, final example that I've got before we get on some hints and tips. Um, this is basically the, the to a degree, the crown and glory in terms of all of our learning. And it goes back to that point I made about um, the social enterprises workshop that is on with Claire's. And they said, let us know what you've got planned. We might not do it now, but we'll find a way that we can do it. So this is a great example of that. The Welsh government had a grant of 6.2 million for musical instruments for schools. It all had to be paid for and delivered in very swift order. We were talking just a short number of months to get this in place. Um, we worked, um, we were really grateful to our colleagues in the Welsh Local Government Association. We've had a number of collaborative um, projects that we've worked with them together on. And um, we've got a really good um, slick collaborative approach now between us. So we were able to really get things moving very, very quickly in terms of the, the wider collaboration. Our first thought was, is there an opportunity here for Welsh social enterprises? Some of the swiftest market engagement that I've ever seen undertaken, but basically compacted a month into about four to five days. Um, there was no Welsh existing market. So normally you'd have said, well, we'll pack it in and we won't bother. But we work with Compass, Wales Cooperative, as was Social Firms Wales, uh, and also um, through the market engagement through a number of um, the Welsh social enterprises, uh, we were able to identify the potential for some form of consortia of Welsh social enterprises that actually through the procurement process that we delivered crystallised into a, an ent a bidding entity, P Music Cymru. They want a major contract um, worth around half a million for the supply of um, entry level brass instruments made of a highly recyclable plastic, uh, the P Buzz and also the P Recorder. And uh, there's a wonderful video that sets out all of that. And that's going to be first shown at Procurex on November the 8th. But um, just to give a scale of the impact, um, 
what if the social enterprises did make money on this? Yes, they're in it to make money. And do you know what that money was invested in? Uh, something in the region of 10 to 12 apprentices for this financial year, people who'd never had the opportunity to work before. So that was a great example. And there was another social enterprise working on this. And again, they were able to invest in their workforce up in Merthyr. So they're the, the, the case studies. We're, we're looking at a whole range of other things now in terms of our wider collaborative um, program because it's been such an eye opener. Um, but some hints and tips I promised. So if you're thinking, well, we've got a particular requirement. We don't quite know where to go. Just speak to Compass and Social Firms Wales. They're a really great place. They know the market. They've got a database of different social enterprises and give you a good flavour of who does what and some of the key people that you need to discuss with. Uh, and that's uh, the reference there to Compass, maintaining a database of Welsh social enterprises. We have got published some great guidance, which um, I basically used as the Bible as we went through all of this particular work. So Wales Procurement Policy Note 0221 is an absolutely superb practical guide for how you can work with um, business assist with the social mission it is uh, just takes you through it step by step uh, but also of course let's not forget Wales procurement policy note 0521 for below threshold contracts because it's not all about big national stuff you could have a really good contract worth about 70 or 80 thousand locally which potentially you could consider restricting to local social enterprises etc whatever it might be um, thinking about how you can engage social enterprises is really really important uh, so there's lots of different ways you can do it through becoming WPPN 0221. You can reserve contracts, you can reserve smaller lots, or it's really powerful. You can work with your current suppliers or suppliers under a particular agreement, and you can challenge them to work with our social enterprises. And, you know, um, on this call, there's probably a number of suppliers. And we heard Shirley mention corporate social responsibility, which is really important on the supply side. So it's great for them. It's a wonderful dividend for them to be working with our social enterprises if we just help them on the journey. And again, you could put, say, your prime contractor in contact with Compass Social Firms Wales. You could make those links. And there is no barriers to what you could be delivering for the people of Wales to that particular approach. Uh, quick win. The Welsh Collaborative Procurement Pipeline, so that's um, a collaboration between us and the Welsh Local Government Association. Um, to those who want to know more about that, myself and Steve Robinson, who heads up Commissioning Procurement at Cardiff Council, will be running through it a little bit more detail at ProcureX on November the 8th. But basically, we've got 14 collaborative regional and national frameworks, combined value of 600 million. It covers everything, construction, food, um, corporate services, professional services, utilities, you know, the full gambit of things that you'll be using across your particular organisation. All of the case studies you've heard today are contained within the pipeline. And um, there is so much more, you know, the, the construction frameworks, whether you're in the north, the southeast or the southwest, have absolutely um, gone to at great lengths to fully embrace social value or you'll see it referenced in the main as community benefits and they have got some really good social enterprises within their supply chains and always looking to do more so quick wins and this collaborative pro program made in wales for wales would just allow you to really demonstrate how you've hit um the key elements as part of upcoming legislation social partnerships and procurement bill but also in terms of delivering against the well-being and future generations and the final slide um i've just provided links to the wales procurement policy notes uh, along with the wales procurement policy statement um so that's it for me i hope those slides actually all came through you didn't just listen to me talking for uh, for uh, the last 15 well minutes on. oh great okay and i'll just um stop sharing i can see there's a few comments in the chat and a few questions so uh, we'll probably do a q a now by the looks of it won't we yes. um, officially yeah so paul first of all thank you i think there is so much to take away from your presentation and to reflect on and i think your examples around social uh, enterprises what it reaffirms is that social value is working and that's a good message overall. So I think, uh, as you mentioned, let's take certain questions which I can see in the Q&A box. And uh, one second, sorry, I can open my screen. 
Uh, so the first question is, does Welsh government have a preferred measurement tool for social value? That's a great question. And um, it probably got lost a bit because my slides didn't move forward. But we've set up, um, we've had clear feedback as part of the Compass uh, consultation. The Welsh Government needs to take a lead on this particular area. As part of that particular work, we will be looking to come up with a consolidated um, approach in terms of that particular toolkit. So we haven't got one currently, but um, we are very, very optimistic that there will be one coming in the year 2023. Brilliant. Uh, one more question around the measurement. Typically, companies can measure and track output, but struggle to measure impact. And I think that's a classical problem. Do you think we could risk seeing an overestimation of impact by contractors? There's always that. Um, particular concern, isn't there? I mean, generally at the tendering stage, particularly if you've got social value, yeah, there might be, and, and, you, and you know, like that's worth 10, 20% of the actual outcome. Um, there is a risk, isn't there, that people will overestimate what they can do. And, and sometimes, you know, that might not even be deliberate. It could just be brilliant, you know, in a wonderful world where everything is blue sky, we can do that, but then reality gets in the way. And so people have effectively won a contract but not been able to deliver what's been set down. So there is that risk, but I think, I think, you know, with effective category management approaches or, you know, particularly in this area where um, you could be talking about some large scale activity, particularly on the construction front, you've got a sector there that is sort of um, well matured in terms of capturing these particular impacts and um it comes down really to the evidence base as well because um yeah we wouldn't just accept a return um particularly as an example going back on community benefits around apprenticeships you need the evidence that actually you've had a number of apprentices have gone through and it's been to do with your particular program but yeah where we do run into a little bit of difficulty is sometimes reporting across different contracts so that is where the risk um does reside but you know as with all of these things it comes down to robust contract management controls in terms of taking the activity forward. Brilliant. And Paul, just adding to this measurement question, I'm thinking maybe in future, will you be only looking at the quantitative measurement or you will be looking at qualitative as well? I think qualitative is really, really important. And probably that's more where we've sat, um, particularly from my perspective, because we do have a number of sort of quantitative um, figures that we, that we reference there. But a lot has been on the qualitative in terms of developing case studies and, yes. you know, we've, we've done this and, and that's happened, etc. But uh, clearly, as the work um, as the work moves forward, then um, yeah, there will be a set of quantitative quantitative measures because you do need those if you're going to enter into an assessment during a procurement exercise. Uh, and also, depending on the particular audience, it's great to say, look, we've delivered I don't know 10 million pounds of benefit to the people of Kefili, whatever it might be. So um, you know, it's just a very very powerful way to promote um, wider social value. There is, of course, then that 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 large large debate. Should we be putting a value on this? Uh, because social value is all about sort of growing and giving back to communities, etc. But I think you know if it helps get the message across to a range of different audiences, and we can use that as a really good, powerful measure to ensure that we're rewarding contracts that are really going to give back. Then I think yes, it, there's a really important place for the quantitative measures. Brilliant. Moving on to the next question, I think it's around that some of the groups most affected by cost of living crisis are, of course, women, people from minority ethnic groups, young people, rural communities and those with disabilities. Now, does the act facilitate well help for and collaboration with these groups? That how we can work better with yeah, marginalized yeah. and disadvantaged groups? I think that's the whole premise of the um, social partnerships and procurement bill to ensure that, you know, we provide really good, strong, fair work across um, across Wales. So I think that piece of legislation is fully in tune there, but the well-being of future generations as well um, s supports all of these um, key indicators. And, and again, the work that we've done 
you know, I was looking at some of the elements there. Uh, the work that we've done is truly supportive of, um, I'd say, a good number of those particular groups referenced, you know, depending on, on where they're located, etc. But, um, you know, definitely the, um, the disadvantaged is certainly an area where we've had some significant um, benefit of mileage. And what's so wonderful about it all is just when you see somebody who probably feels a bit like, I don't know, I, I might never get a job. You know, I'm destined to a life of whatever it might be. And then they just get the opportunity to, that you know, that we all take for granted, all of us so who, who are employed, but they get that first opportunity. And some of the joy that you see with people, it's just so, it's just so moving, the truth be told. I don't know if anyone saw the ITV news. I keep harping on about it, but uh, back in, back in uh, I think it was back in July, it was sadly after Phil Bennett had sadly died. So the first part of the programme was uh, a dedication to uh, one of our great rugby players. Uh, but after that, they said, oh, I'm just coming up, um, a little bit of uh, an update on education. And then, then followed um, our finance minister's visit to Merth Tiddle Institute for the Blind. It was around the musical instruments. And um, aside from the fact, obviously, I've been very actively involved in that work. So um, I was very proud to see that. What was just overwhelming was just the joy of the I know they, they were just brilliant on television they interviewed a lot of the workers there and they were saying about what they were doing and the opportunity it had given them and uh, that's where you really appreciate the um, the impact that it can uh, can have brilliant uh paul just maybe thinking uh maybe it's a tough question to ask but i just want to understand because we are talking about social enterprises and say smes and vcscs uh do you think it is somehow disadvantaging them if they need to measure their social impact because it comes as the extra cost so to say so are we like disadvantaging our smes when it comes to measurement part I don't think so, because um, if you've got somebody in the locality, or you know, be that an SME or a social enterprise, um, the actual measures, you know, it's the very nature of them, would actually give a higher social value dividend to your more local community-based suppliers than perhaps somebody coming in managing things from, I don't know, just pick on Doncaster for no particular mm. reason. <laughs> God bless them. And um, so I don't think it is a disadvantage to the small supplies, but it goes back to the point I made earlier, but that, you know, the supply side does need support. So we're fortunate in Wales, we've got Business Wales, uh, who are set up to provide a range of support to Welsh businesses. And of course, it will come as no surprise that we're working closely with colleagues in Business Wales so that um, anything that we do and the support that we're providing on the, the procurement side, um, Business Wales colleagues will be providing that support on the business side as well. Brilliant. Thanks, Paul. My next question or the question from our audience is, and it's an interesting one. Are there any contractors or suppliers representing on the working groups that you're working? Currently, that working group is focused um, entirely on the procurement side of things. But um, as we move forward, you know, uh, there could be the scope for us to uh, flex that a little bit more. But uh, what I'd recommend is if you just drop a note through to the commercial policy team, the mailbox was included in the presentation. Uh, a gentleman called Rob Newman, who uh, would have been here today, Rob, but unfortunately was unavailable. So, uh, so he asked me to um, step in because you know, my wider experience of social value um, for that first part of the presentation. But Rob will be able to give you the uh, the full picture in that particular regard. But it's a very valid point, and if you look at construction um, across Wales, there is a construction forum which is set up. Uh, and that brings in Welsh government officials, public sector officials, industry representation as well. So um, yeah, so if uh, a note goes through to that mailbox to uh, Mr. Rob Newman, Rob will be able to uh, provide an update in terms of future plans. Brilliant. Uh, just one last question. In the current financial climate and situation, uh, do we need to add social value more than ever? Do you think we could see a regression in public procurement practice for cheaper bids and lesser social impact offerings? Yeah, that's always the worry, isn't it? Because um, there is a massive squeeze on budgets across the public sector. Now, we know that the new prime minister 
and the chance, of course, in Wales, we've got our wonderful Stenith uh, that we work to, but um, funding does actually um, come from um, central government through the Barnet formula. So a reduction in public sector spending does have an impact on Wales quite clearly, not to mention all of the inflationary pressures, which means that our spend is going uh, a lot less further than it did previously. So um, there is a concern that uh, we will move more to um, price focused type activity and it could be seen in smaller ways. So we might have gone out and done a tender, not talking about us specifically, but an organisation might have said, well, we'll look at price 30 percent and um, the wider quality 70 percent with a, a social value indication within that 70. Now they might take the view, well, things are getting a bit tight, so let's put price up to 60, the quality and the social value just at the 40 level. And straight away, then you are just um, driving a coach and horses through the, um, the impact, the quality and the wider social value will have. And it does become more of a price focused activity. So there is a worry. But the good news is, you know, the social enterprises there, um, they do have that big, big dividend in terms of giving back to the local community. So hopefully you can make the case. Look, let's just see in this particular scenario, we're paying a little bit more, but look at the benefit it's bringing into the wider community, then it becomes something of a no brainer. Um, alternatively, you do find that they're, they're really very cost effective. So um, I'll pick on Ministry of Furniture and Merth Tidville Institute for the Blind, because when they do a project, they are so good at the remanufactured. Let's just say you were purchasing new and it was, I've got a two million pound budget on fitting out a number of offices, absolutely wonderful. You speak to the ministry and uh, Merthyr Tidville, they say, well, we'll remanufacture this, we can bring this in, we can do that for you, do this for you. And you'll find you're paying a lot less. So um, so hopefully the fact that they're a very innovative, flexible sector, um, and we have seen the evidence of that in practice, means that, um, yeah, you will actually be paying less for their particular services because they've got that flex, because, you know, they'll say, OK, well, what you would need us to do. And um, so there are, you know, I am optimistic that as long as we still maintain our creative approach to procurement, that there's no reason why we can't actually use social enterprises and, and the social value approach, um, you know, to help us meet some of the current challenges. And let's be honest, anything that moves the supply chain from global with all of the pressures that operates under to one that's more UK focused, um, you know, in the in the medium, short, medium and longer term, it's got to be a really, really good thing uh, and ensure a whole range of different value measures. You know, hence why we're having the discussion today. Brilliant. Thank you, Paul. Just last five minutes and I will just talk about a small organization with big impact that is action sustainability. A little bit about our credentials around social value. Of course, we have worked with, we are working with NHS, specifically NHS supply chain on their social value journey, actually integrating social value within their procurement processes. Because NHS is not only buying medical stuff, but they are also buying non-medical stuff that we require in day-to-day -day activities in hospitals and trust. We are working with certain rail industries, RSSB, and a lot of uh, talk specifically around how social value can work for them. We have worked with a lot of uh, uh, technology companies and Siemens specifically in implementing social value and actually looking from a procurement angle. And uh, we have also worked with a lot of government organizations, public sector around looking at social value and different elements of social value overall. We do have a lot of publications, so please check our website. We have blogs with NHS, uh, how you can actually work around your social value framework. We have just released a social value tools report because it's all around understanding different frameworks that are existing in the market around social value. So we have worked with different providers, try to understand what is there within each and every framework and tool providers, what they can give you from a social value aspect. And of course, around ESG, which is again, a kind of a big topic specifically for private sector, that how we can work around the S part within the ESG. So I think, uh, with this, 
that's pretty much it from our side. Thank you everyone for participating in today's session. I know it's a Friday, but thank you for your time. And thanks Paul for your time and sharing your insights in today's session. Thank you so Welcome. much. Nice to meet you, Paul. Everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.